why you have felt it. Maybe some hints how you can understand this. This is why we have a very special guest, Mr. Dr. Jan Gladner. He is a therapist and he has written a wonderful book about emotion as resources. And he will give us a seven minute spe speech on emotions. Hurry up. Thank you, Maria, for the introduction. Thank you all together for the opportunity to present you some background, background information about emotions. Perhaps this isn't necessary, but already 30 years ago, Fair and Russell said, everybody knows what an emotion is until asked to give a definition. And truly, it hasn't got any easier in the last years. So let's start to confuse you. <laughs> What's an emotion and what, it is, what is it for? To come closer to these questions, it's important to know emotion's main purposes. Or in the words of Germany's well-known author Goethe, you will only see what you know. For the first purpose, we can delete the E and get motion. Emotions are powerful sources which let us do something and let us don't do something. For the second purpose, we can replace the E by a sign, which means emotions are signals for us and others something important happens right now, and they suggest a, a direction for the following motion. Together, emotion is a sign and motion. To fulfill these fundamental functions, emotions are at the central place where they coordinate different subsystems. On one side, emotions are deeply connected with our body. We feel emotions bodily. We live emotions by our body. And body processes can reinforce emotions too. Some scientists say emotions are nothing else than recognized body sensations. On the other side, emotions are highly influenced by the individual's learning history and the culture someone lives in. Family, peer group, but also learning models presented by media convey, display rules, and shape the way somebody recognizes, interprets, and lives emotions. And emotions are also in between somebody's needs, like attachment and control, and the way of change the situation by action to serve these needs. So, together, emotions are important and make sense. But really, do they? So many people suffer by emotions, their own ones as well as by others. And of course, not in every situation, every emotion, in every intensity, doesn't matter if too much or too less, will be helpful. But to know more about the sign and motion behind the recognized emotion, to know more about their coordinating function, helps us to be aware of the sense behind the recognized emotion. And this helps us to be more complete, this helps us to get more emotionally intelligent or better emotional competent. <coughs> to illustrate the sense of emotions, it could be helpful to show how they assist us in dealing with our personal borders. Emotions regulate these personal borders. In this context, Joy and sadness will regulate situations we get or lose something which is important or of a high value for us. In case of joy, we open our borders, let it in, getting bigger. In case of sadness, after realizing a loss, our borders are hurt and we have to recover. In this context, fear and anxiety and anger will regulate situations we are threatened. In case of fear, we try to avoid, try to get distance to the person, the thing or thought which has frightens us, getting smaller, perhaps breathing in. And in case of anger, what do we do then? No, not automatically punch and fight, 
we fence off the, the threat, saying stop. And this is really an important ability for the development of somebody's self. Anyway, it helps me to better understand the eruptive anger moments of my adolescent daughter, but that's another story. One more thing. Culture and individual learning history shapes the way somebody lives his own emotions. This can be named emotional style. And for me, as a psychotherapist, it is very important, or one of my most important goals, to talk with my patients about their emotional styles and under which circumstances it developed. Some perhaps grow up in a world of feel good. Sometimes this means you have to feel good. And this can mean don't feel bad. And for some people, the solution is don't feel at all. Others grow up learning to avoid or better suppress some specific emotions, perhaps when they were challenged or alone, dealing with this emotion in their childhood. By not feeling an emotion, it's getting more difficult for us to recognize the emotion, and by not recognizing the emotion, it's getting more difficult for us to deal with it. So, what is your emotional style? Which emotion do you easily share with others? Which emotion do you easily share with others, but you don't like the way you do it? And which emotion do you perhaps hide, don't like, or even don't feel? It is very difficult to define a healthy emotional style. But truly, it has to do with awareness of every emotion, your own ones as well as others. And it has to do with emotional flexibility as a competence of regulating emotions. Emo emotional flexibility has two sides comparable with a coin. And it means, on the one side, to live and feel an emotion more when it is helpful, and on the other side, feel and live in emotion less when it is necessary. I would like to end with Portugal's famous author, author Peixoa, who reminded us, basically, the best way of traveling is by feeling. So I wish you tonight, and for any further emotional journeys, a good trip, and thank you very much. Okay, so um, these guys, and actually there would have been two of them, he is telling us every emotion is good and we should live every emotion, we should feel every emotion. Let's be a little bit more critical. Is that really true? I mean, if we think about children, if we think about adolescents, if we think about ourselves, is really every emotion good? No. Um, I would say, let's play and challenge a therapist. <laughs> In your team, find an emotion that is not good, that nobody should feel, and tell a little bit about the circumstances around it, and then we will challenge Jan, and he will try to find an answer. Okay? And go! Find something which is not allowed to feel. Somebody has something to challenge Jan? Okay, Sandina has something. Great. David has something. Thank you. Hi, David. Hello. I would propose shame as one. Check. Yeah. Um, we will come on this topic or on this emotion some later. Um, right now, I can say um, shame is very, very important to be connected with a community you are in. And it helps us to. Um, well, not to do things which uh, have the results we are kicked off our community. And I know people suffer for shame and struggle with it, of course, but it's important to see what's the basic of this emotion. But are you referring to the resolution of shame is important for being part of a community or the feeling of shame itself? Uh, I think it has a, a kind of protective function. It, 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 
helps us uh, even before we do things which can result in this kickoff uh, uh, our community. And so the feeling um, is emotion not to do something, as I said before. Thank you. Um, we were talking Hi. about um, uh, anger as it, when it becomes more hate. Yes. Hate. Yeah. It doesn't feel very good. To no, of that. course not. And hate could be very destructive. And so I think it's really important to see, uh, for me as a psychotherapist, I always uh, try to talk with my patients about um, shouting at somebody and perhaps um, do really destructive, destructive things and suppress an emotion. There is something in between and it's important to discover what, the, what is in between. So how can I deal with anger before it gets to hate? And even when I suppress anger, it, it can get immo any, any, uh, more difficult to find a way dealing with anger before it leads to destructive behavior. Uh, I eat from Egypt. Hi. Um, hello. I'm Jan. Yeah. <laughs> it was really expressive, uh, uh, your demonstration. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> but we think that anger has um, all the time bad consequences. Yes. I mean, uh, for, for the person himself and maybe for the others. Yeah. But for the best, it hurts the person himself first because yeah. it, um, it follows some, he can play himself, that he can, some, at this moment, he was um, up control or uh, yeah. not exactly under control, everything. Yeah. Uh, that's why we have also the same, the same meaning that anger should be there yeah. as a feeling. I'm very grateful for this uh, uh, experience you share with us and I can promise you uh, many years ago I would say the same you did now. And it was a very, very important part even of my personal uh, uh, development to see that anger, not in every case, has bad consequences. It really helps me to fence off. And this fencing off is a very important part of development. And uh, when I do not like this anger, when I perhaps uh, teach my daughter, for instance, I told you about her and her anger, eruptive anger moments, when I tell her it's not good to live this anger, it could be that she gets later in trouble with fencing off and dealing with her personal borders. So that's my opinion today, to um, let anger be, but find a way to deal with it on a helpful way. Yes, I'm from Kosovo, my name is Veta. I would like to ask you if it is needed to express all emotions, and if we feel too much, maybe we will get depressed. <laughs> this is the problem nowadays. Uh, that's a very, very good thought, and it's important to keep this thought in mind, but to deal with emotions, it's more important just to feel. And uh, it's very, very difficult to uh, put thoughts over the, the feeling, and uh, I know many people have problems with too much emotion, and they, they, um, they lost in a jungle of emotions. So it's important to come back to what are the main, or some scientists say, primary emotions. As I showed here, look what are the the um, the personal, what are the the pictures which help me to show yes, this is anger, this is anxiety or fear, and then I only have to talk about four emotions. For example, perhaps it's some more as we can see on the flower. But it's not so difficult when I know what is the primary emotion, what is the important emotion behind this emotional jungle I see, I, I feel sometimes. The answer is not to suppress every emotion. Uh, what about envy among siblings? When the, uh, the new child is born and the other yeah. one feels set back, yeah. we, we sort of try to control the envy of him. Yeah. And whereas, for example, a child his joy, we say it's okay, more of that. Yeah. So that's why, how we regulate it. Uh, I wouldn't say more of that. 
I, I would prefer even... We're television entertainers. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. I, I, would, I would try to see what is behind this envy. And there I'm back to talking about these four emotions. And what would you say is, well, we have joy, sadness, fear, and anger. What is behind envy? What would you say? I mean, clearly, if a second child is born, yeah. the, one, the first child feels set back and being deprived of love and, and, yeah. and affection. And perhaps it's anxious about what happens now. Will I have the attention or the attachment to my parents anymore? And when I, I see what is behind, when, I, when I'm aware of what's behind the emotion, it's getting more easy for me to deal with it, you know? So I would try to look what's behind envy. It can't be challenged, really. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> With joy, okay. Yeah, well, we I, talked about uh, uh, that it may be not be the emotion itself, but what if you feel a person feels joy about very horrible things like yeah, uh, yeah. killing a person yeah. or yeah. <laughs> hurting people? Yeah, that's not justified joy. I can imagine that's really a problem. <laughs> well, or please, please be aware of every addiction has to do with a not justified joy. When somebody comes, comes up, when an alcohol addict comes home opening his first beer, of course he has a feeling of joy, but this joy isn't very helpful. So it's really important to see again what is the, what is the event which let somebody be, feel joy about uh, perhaps others are sad or hurt. And talking about this could be very, very important. So, it, wait, it's so the concept of schadenfreude would be yes. unjustified joy? Yeah, I would say that. Or even the joy uh, when you, uh, you feel when, you, uh, when your soccer team uh, gets a goal, but you are on the wrong side of the stadium, could be not very helpful. And justify and being helpful is very, very important when, when dealing with emotions. Thank you so much. Thank you.